Welcome to California, welcome to Gunther Works, and welcome to an incredibly special day. You see, it was just over two years ago that I was incredibly fortunate to be invited to drive my first Gunther Works experience. It was a coupe, funnily enough, in white. It was a friend of mine's, and it blew my mind for what was capable from a Porsche Resto Mod product. Now, at that time, we did a walk and talk with Amjad, and he gave me this key. Now, I need you to stay around for the end of the video, because this is quite literally going to unlock what's about to unfold. But before we do, we're going to be catching up with Amjad once again, and we're going to be giving you a 12-month update to the day on the new 993 Gunther Works Turbo. So I can't believe we are 12 months to the day, right? right. Since we were stood here, you launched Turbo. It was orange then. I have to say in this finish, this satin finish, the, mm. the sculpture of it is unreal. So 12 months on, you've got a, a Turbo Touring variant. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the Touring spec, and we're going to be debuting this on a few days at Quail. And some of the uh, big visual differences you see here is our latest wheel. This is a Turbo Twist wheel that's been modernized, and it has these aero vents on the outside. And as the wheels turn, uh, it actually extracts air, turbulent air, out of the wheel well. Uh, for aerodynamic reasons. And some of the other highlights here is the, the rear parcel shelf here, which you can see with the helmets. Uh, that's a new feature. So this is the latest uh, touring spec ducktail, and you can see that it features these strakes that accelerate air into the flat fan with a uh, ram air scoop and a built-in um, gurney spoiler as part of the whole structure of the, the ducktail. Looks awesome. So this is now your sort of functional production spec touring wing as it were. Correct. You can get the wing version or the touring spec which has the ducktail version. It's up to the customer. But obviously this doesn't make as much downforce as the wing. Sure. But you know we have clients that like this look and uh, we've tried to incorporate as much downforce okay. into this design as possible. It looks super clean. I love it. So in a minute we're going to dive like super in depth into all of these upgrades. What is amazing to see is being here is that you have a real working development car right of absolutely. this turbo this isn't you know like a just a static you've got a proper working car right correct. which we're going to go for a first drive in soon so stay tuned I'm for excited. that i but just think once again i've not been stood in front of one since then sculpturally just unbelievable and i, I know i say this a lot the camera's definitely not doing it justice and there's something about this satin finish which is accentuating the sculpture and curves on it to a yeah. different level, right? It does so. show the body work very well. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Okay, well, we are going to speak to Amjad and then we're going to go for a drive. Twelve months to the day I was last here, yeah. we pulled the covers off the orange car. That's right. And I think it melted the internet because the combined views of those two videos are close to 4 million. Wow. And I've never seen sentiment in the comment section like it. Wow. And I think it's because, and I think these are probably my words, not anyone else's, that if you look at the ingredients of this, mm -hmm. 750 horsepower, what do you estimate the wet weight to be? It'll be sub 1300 kilograms. Right, so 750 horsepower, sub 1300 kilograms, yeah. rear wheel drive, manual, air-cooled, flat fan, six cylinder, twin turbocharged, 993 GT2 RS. Well, that's you, my interpretation you, of what this, you, if such a thing would exist, yeah, well, this would be it. That's not my words, but yeah. <laughs> um, it's changed a little bit from last year. It has. This is our, like our touring spec, if you like. Mm -hmm. Peter spoke about that. There's been a lot of changes from when you guys were here 12 months ago, and I'll go through some of those for you. We tweaked some of the aero. We spoke about a bonnet or hood duct, as you call it, that channels air from the front bumper. Now, what we did was last year, the charge cooling system that we were going to do before was different to what we've ended up doing. So now the charge cooler radiator actually sits in this duct, and you'll see that there. Okay, wow. There's a reason for that, and it was more to do, not from a packaging perspective, but more from a heat dissipation. But that then gave us another opportunity, which is, and I'll talk about it later on with the rear ducts, where they were split before, now they have one single use, and they are there purely for intake. We've redesigned the charge cooling system. Okay. It's made it a hell of a lot more efficient. I would imagine with this being air-cooled, that's been quite an important thing. Uh, heat management has been an issue, because mm -hmm. obviously it's an air-cooled car, but we redesigned a lot of the stuff in-house, and I'll show you that in a second. 
And that's made the engine way more efficient than it was at the outset. And that's led it to developing actually quite a bit more power than 750, but I'm not going to give you a number. But the road car will be 750. Okay, so capable of much more and then dial it back. Keep it yes. inverted commas sensible. Yeah, so, I mean, our target weight is going to be something, it's going to be about 1250 kilograms. You've got 750 you horsepower, you've got 570 pounds foot of torque. Yeah. So we needed to have that bit of a safety net and we, we've done it now. So it's got traction control, it's also got launch control. Launch control as well. Yeah. And you've developed all of this. Yeah. House, your yeah. own software. Yeah, because of the uh, the MoTeC that we use on it, mm -hmm. that's something we can program into the MoTeC from, from from the outset. It's taken a lot of development time, mm -hmm. granted, a lot of driving and a, a lot of testing and whatnot, but we've done it and it works really really well. So Pete's just touched on these new the wheels. These are actually functional from an aero yeah. perspective, right? So what, we, what we've done on the wheels, if you look around the edges of the wheels, yeah. these are sided as well, and so they're rotational. So what they do is, as the wheel rotates, they basically create a vortex, which then extracts heat from the discs, and okay. it pulls air out as opposed to pushing air in. Now, traditionally, on a wheel that ran, what do you call those, turbines, they used to draw air in. But from an aerodynamic perspective, it's yeah. quite inefficient. Right. But from 1950s, 60s technologies, that was fine. Yes. What these do is these create a vortex that then sucks air out. So yeah. it's about heat dissipation. So yes. thermal management of the brakes, but of the also brakes. With, with, with aero in mind. Well, it's, that's more uh, a brake from a brake uh, functionality as opposed to the aero. Yeah. What we've done on an aero front, as we were talked about last year, these little vents yes. here, they bring in air from the front of the bumper and they create uh, an air curtain around it. Wow. And then the side vents on the front fenders, mm -hmm. they basically release all the, oh, the wow. pressurized okay. air out of the front wheel well. So this is a pressure release yeah. from yeah. the wheel well. Uh, um, and then not and only wheels, that. wheels, you are also making these in-house. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. these are forged magnesium and carbon fiber wheels. The 11. barrel itself is carbon. Yeah. What uh, do these weigh? <laughs> oh, yeah. an 18 by 13 inch wheel weighs about 14 pounds, 15 pounds, about seven and a half kilograms for an 18 by 13. So these are 18 by 11 on the front. So that's like a 295. 295, yeah. That's ludicrously large. 295. 295s on the front and 335s on the back. I don't know many cars that wear it up. Like many road cars that wear a 295. Can't yeah, there's, I can't think of any. As with all our cars, these have a square track. So front and rear track is square. So oh, they don't sit traditionally air-cooled where the front wheels are narrow, which is uh -huh. what causes understeer. I suppose one of the perks of using 993 multi-link rear. Yeah, right. Uh, obviously it's... Uh, starting with that as a base, mm -hmm. where we have a multi-link rear suspension, makes it infinitely better than the previous air cool cars. And then we can manipulate that, like for instance, even on the front we use our own uprights. And then the scope it gives us in terms of setting up the rear suspension with that multi-link and using custom parts and what have you, and then running our JZ active shocks. It's not just about handling, it's about ride as well. Mm -hmm. So it makes the car very compliant, but at the same time, when you throw it around a corner, it's, it's glued to the road. Speaking of suspension and handling, I think that probably ties in quite nicely with yes. your, your torsional rigidity improvements back here. This is uh, <laughs> what we call our rear reinforcement brace. So one of the upshots of when we did um, Speedster was as you know, with any car where you remove a roof, you lose torsional rigidity. What we found was the chassis would twist. So we developed a rear brace, reinforcement brace, that eliminated that twist. Mm -hmm. And what it did was it made the car actually stronger than a coupe in terms of torsional rigidity. Okay. So because we've got so much power going through this car, this is going to be an option. You can optionally specify this. Like if you've got somebody who wants to track the car along, mm -hmm. this is something that we would recommend. And conveniently, it's that the carbon it's a uh, good, good space for putting Yeah, rear shelf is made to take two crash helmets. And what that'll do is that increase the torsional rigidity of the car quite significantly. Okay. One of the perks, if you're wondering why is it important to have a, a, a torsionally sound chassis, is when you're tuning and, and developing the sort of suspension profile of yeah. a car, you can, you can do as many fine tunings as you want on the actual suspension, but if the thing that it's stuck to flexes, flexes. you're going to lose all of that. Exactly. So that's why you've, so, you've started from the ground up. Right? Yeah, so that, that gives us a base to make the chassis solid so we can then do all the handling improvements that we've made to the car. It gives us a solid foundation to start from. So, and that's really, really important, especially car of this kind of performance. So do you have any ballpark figures as to the kind yeah, of... Yeah, when we, when we did it before, it ended up being 150% improvement in terms of torsional uh, rigidity in terms of twist forces. 150%? Yeah. Right, that's massive yeah. gains. So the Speedster is actually is stiffer than a coupe with a roof. But again, 750 horsepower, 570 pounds for the torque. You need it. 1250 target weight, yeah. kilograms. Important. Yeah. So big story on the car, cooling. Yep. You remember these from last year. Mm -hmm. 
So now, whilst they look similar, this has been completely redesigned now. This is the induction for the engine. Okay. So these are ducts now that basically take air, goes over the top of the rear wheel well, straight into a filter, and straight into the turbo, which is there. The turbo sit here. Yeah. So it's so a very short journey. Very short journey, and it's direct, and it's aerodynamically efficient. So we, when we've done the CFD testing, when we were designing it, it's fantastic because it's a natural curve, and it goes straight through the filter and straight into the turbo. And Fabulous. it's obviously at speed. There's yes. a ram air effect. It is charging it. So it's using the whole length of that intake yes. that then goes up into a pipe that goes over the top and straight into the turbo. So the turbos get plenty of air, which they obviously need. So under here is the magic. Every now and again, I'll drop Amjad a WhatsApp throughout the year and he, yeah. goes, and he, goes, he goes, mate, you are not ready. Yeah. You, are, you are not ready. Yeah. Share with me what I've been dying to see okay. for so, the last six months. <laughs> yeah, I know. I kept dropping you hints about this. Oh, but I would, so yeah. this looks quite a bit different from what you saw last year, right? <laughs> Vastly so. Yeah. Obviously, continuous development. What we did was we redeveloped the charge cooling system. And again, remember like I spoke about the curve in terms of the intake? If you stand at the back of the engine, you see now the intakes are curved. So they come from the turbo. They go through the charge coolers into the individual throttle bodies and straight into the inlet valves. We've minimized the air going into the turbo. We've now minimized the air coming out. They go through two individual charge coolers and then straight into throttles. Now, because of that improvement in airflow, uh -huh. efficiency that these work in compared to the older ones, is n it's night and day. To give you an example, so intake temperatures here coming yes. out of the turbo are 198 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. They go through two and a half inches of charge cooler yeah. and they come out at 78 degrees Fahrenheit at 60 degree ambient. Are you serious? Yeah. So power gain must have been yeah, so wild power, when obviously, you put those on. Obviously, the cooler the air, the more dense it is, yeah, the more oxygen rich it is, the more fuel you can put in, the more power you can get out. So when we redesigned these, um, the improvements, even to be fair, even we were surprised at the improvements. Again, it, it's not by accident. We designed them, we did all the CFD testing. The CFD testing showed that they would flow a lot better. Okay. And then what we did is we upgraded the type of charge cooler that we used. That has made everything way more efficient. Everything runs cooler. And that again, from remember last year, we spoke a lot about how it was all about managing heat. I think so one of the things I'm really year. impressed with, I mean, how old's Gunth work? Six years old? Yeah, we were six years old in May. Your design language has become solidified in such a short period of time. Like, I truly think I could hold a piece of Gunther Works hardware. And I would say it was from your brand. I mean, just all mm. of the details and sculpture and the way it all Yeah, everything sort of... It's got a feel to it. Well, a lot of this goes back to Peter, because so, so he's... You know, so his eye to detail is, you know, he, he, that's what the brand's been built on. So if you look, we've, we've got, we've got a billet fan yeah. shroud. You don't have to have that looking that good. No, <laughs> we, we've got, you know, um, 3D printed ink canal. But if you look at these cutouts yes. here, they all match. This is what I'm saying. This, this to me, I, I could see this out of context and mm -hmm. be pretty confident in who it came yeah. from. Yeah. It's very, very it's, cool. Um, and that matches, if you look at our dials, mm -hmm. You see the bezels on the dial, the little notch. Yes, that's all through, that's through all here. Through Run us through the flat fan, and I think it's, it's important to contextualize this because from an engineering point of view, quite frankly, you'd have to be crazy to take that on. How, no, I mean, so it's, it's it, a big job. It's, it is and it isn't. Um, it is in the sense that making it work on a non-race application was always going to be a challenge. But mm. the reason it was done originally, because it was way more efficient than a vertical fan. Right. And the statistics okay. on a 993 are at 6,100 RPM, a, a vertical fan will deliver 1,200 liters of air per second. A flat fan will deliver 2,100 liters of air per second at okay. the same engine, uh, the RPM. But more critically for us, a flat fan will cool all six cylinders equally, whereas a vertical fan, cylinders one and four, which are at the back of the engine, all traditionally always run a little bit hotter than the, the, okay. the front four cylinders. And again, everything's about heat management, right? Uh -huh. So it was the perfect solution. So it's not there for aesthetics no, of course. and the no, noise absolutely. it makes and yeah. how it changes the character of the car. It, yes, it does do all of that. But the main reason we did it was to make the engine cool and run cool. And like I said, it's been done before, so mm -hmm. we just did it again. But this sort of difference. But where has it been done before? I'm dead. <laughs> well, on a 917 Le Mans car. Yeah. <laughs> Not a road going <laughs> Porsche. That's, that's, you know, that's super, super. But again, cool. it, the, the reasons for it, you know, because, oh, did you do it to make it look cool? No, we did it because it works. Yeah. Um, and it works very, very well. Excuse the pun, but it is highly cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's quite cool. <laughs> um, um, significance of the fan itself. 
you guys worked with an aerospace grade yes. company to to make the most efficient fan pattern, right? Yeah, these guys, it was it was like a Skunk Works project of their own. It was like they did it on their own time. Uh, and they were car geeks. So what they did was they basically scanned a fan off an 0911 because they were not Porsche guys and then put it through whatever computers it did and came up with an optimal shape. Um, and that's what we use, um, not only on, on this fan, which mm -hmm. has been slightly redesigned based on that, but also on our standard cars. Even the vertical fans are all uh, billet fans that are designed by that company. So, so I can just see the reservoirs here of the suspension but on, yeah. the, on the production version when it hits you're going to have a system which is adaptable right yeah we're looking at um so the car's going to run in three different modes it's going to run at 550 650 and 750 horsepower yeah. which will be selectable we are also looking at uh, a suspension solution whereby you can adjust the suspension these are active now uh, semi-active now where you can change the suspension settings from an app on your phone but what we're looking to do is to integrate that completely with a new system where we can even raise and lower the ride height okay um, we can change suspension settings on the fly but also you can integrate within the, the modes of the engine so you can have 550 which is like a touring mode mm -hmm. where the car will sit a little bit higher mm -hmm. suspension will be a little bit softer but it will have active yaw and active roll control so even okay. if you throw it around a corner it so, will stay flat so this will be a six axis read will it yeah wow that's yeah. a trick that's and then you know <laughs> 650 it will be something else 750 and they, they, there'll be uh, possibly a track mode so you can hit a button and the car just goes bang and everything's set, so you can just go and blast it in the track. Wow. But we're looking at that, that's something again, it's, everything's ongoing. It, we're sure. developing stuff all the time. So that's something exciting that's in the works. So, this is your production spec touring wing. Yeah. Obviously less downforce. Yeah. Do you have to take into account if someone's speccing a touring, that the he, suspension setup or yeah, well, so the characteristics are if different. We have a lot of customers that aren't going to go on a track, mm -hmm. and they like the elegance of the ducktail. And those cars will be not as extreme mm -hmm. as the touring. So a touring spec will, will run different suspension setup. We'll give the uh, customer an option of running the car a little bit more as a tourer as opposed to a track car. Mm -hmm. But if you are going to take it for a track, the beauty of this is you can get this as an option, and it comes in a beautiful case. So if you're going to take it to the track, you can bolt the other wing on. Oh, so you can have yeah, you two can wings. Have both. Yeah. Yeah. No brainer. Yeah. Wow. So you can have both. I love it. I'm, I, as you know, I'm not a big ducktail fan, mm -hmm. but I really like this. Mm. And it's, it's very, very functional. So if you look at the details on it, it's made to provide as much cooling to the engine as possible. And then as much air to the flat fan as possible. And it looks very, very elegant. And, and a lot of our customers like that elegant look. So um, this is why we give it as an option now. So you can have the best of both worlds. Right, so when I was here 12 months ago, I mean, the amount of components that you make in-house anyway is unbelievable. But these were almost sort of 3D printed from a block of acrylic. The, the beauty of this is it's become sort of like, uh, it's become an iconic look for mm -hmm. our brand. Yeah, yeah. And obviously all the cars carry it now. Yeah, and again, all made in-house, same as our headlamps. We make those in-house. That's a big undertaking to make. Oh, it seems yeah. like such a boring subject, like making headlamps, but right. the challenge from an industry sort of homologation point of view to it's make your own headlamp is massive. It's a nightmare. But it's worth it. If you want perfection, then that's something you've got to do. Yeah. So we decided we were going to do it ourselves. And, and we're, like, we're very fortunate in the sense that because we have the facilities to do it, that mm. we can do it, so. I think one of the, the, the greatest tricks with it is that even though it's a really contemporary interpretation, it's clearly a 993. Yeah, so what Peter was trying to do is he was trying to maintain that original look, mm -hmm. but update it at the same time, and I think we've, um, hey, we've carried it off quite the well. The sculpture of it, I mean, there's things you, you probably don't pick up on at first, obviously the original one's just flush, sort of yeah. big bar, the amount of sculpture and pinch points on this and, and the depth little, to the it. The little vents at the end. Yeah, look at these here. Tiny little, little vents within these lights. These are 3D printed. 3D uh, printed in canal again. Yeah, our exhaust Inconel tips. exhaust tips. Yeah. No. Crikey, 3D the, printed um, in canal is F1 stuff. That is bonkers. They're quite um, expensive and time consuming to make, but again, again yeah, they're doable. It's worth so it, isn't do it? Yeah, absolutely. Right then. Crikey. I mean, there's interiors and there's, there's Gunther Works interiors, right? I, I say it all the time, man. Like, as much as we try our best to capture, I mean, it's cars all around the world, but this thing, honestly, sculpturally, I, phenomenal. But what you very difficult to pick up on through camera is the feel of quality with every touch point. I mean, it, it just oozes it. The tactile part of any car 
it's really fun. really important I mean there's a lot of cars that I've driven in the past that are supposed to be high end cars but the tactile parts of the cars are, are really cheap and that lets the whole experience down and for us especially for people that's a really really big thing one of the things that really struck me on uh, Speedster was the weighting between the throw of the gear, the weight of the clutch and the weight of the steering. You don't even want to go how there with how long that took. It sounds, it sounds a nuanced detail, but w if you have one of those attributes which is out, yeah. like you, f you just throws everything out. Like yeah. the, the feel of it is so important. You've weight matched everything. Yeah, getting really the weight well. right for even the, the gear, the gear shift. Yeah. You know, it was a, a lot of experimenting, a lot of trying it, making changes, trying it until we got it to where we wanted it to be. So quite a few changes in here now. Yeah. Single piece carbon. Yeah, the center console. All of it's this all been completely carbon. redesigned. That's all one single piece of carbon now, and it has a phone holder. Because that was an iPad last time. Yeah, but people want somewhere to put the phone. So we've done that. You so have, phone and it's holder very there. cool. And then it has two <laughs> large cup holders at the back, because people want to go to Starbucks. US in, spec, I see. They are, in they are substantial. Yeah, uh, in an phenomenal. expensive, 750 plus horsepower car. <laughs> Going back to the dashboard, we've got a uh, boost gauge there. Boost now. gauge. I mean, what heavily turbocharged car wouldn't be complete without a Absolutely. boost gauge? And then also on the steering wheel side of things now, we have integrated buttons on the steering wheel. We've got nose lift. Mm -hmm. And uh, on our coupes and our, speed, well, on our speedsters, it's the sport button. This car will evolve and we will have the settings for the 550, 650, and 750 okay. horsepower modes on the steering wheel. So you'll be able to. Selected so that might there. be like a rotary click switch or something. Yeah. yeah. The urge to just 750. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be there. So after this, we're going to go for the the world's first drive in the Gunther Turbo Mule Mule development That's car. That's our development car. Yeah. yeah. So um, what excites me about this is 12 months in the automotive industry isn't that long. I mean, these things take so long. The iterations and the trials and errors and engineering and supply. And all of this jazz, the fact that we're here 12 months to the day and you have a working development mule. Well, both is of these cars are running driving cars, so that's the that's one we're serious. doing all the miles on. This is one we're taking to the shows and the cars and coffee events and letting people have a play and whatnot. But the development work's all getting done on Mule 2, which you'll be driving today. Hope you're ready for it. <laughs> I'm beyond ready for this. All right, James, one last thing, mate. Yeah. Go on then, start her up. Fuel pumps be pumping. Oh my days. The significance of this key was around about two years ago, this guy gave me this key. And I'm not sure if you were being nice. <laughs> I gave it to you as a souvenir, but I did say to you, one day, James. One day. I didn't think it would be so soon. Mm. But if this is on video record, that Gunther, I said it was the best car that I drove that year. Mm -hmm. Which is, and I'd driven some serious cars that year. Mm -hmm. And I said to Amjad, honestly, I genuinely aspire to one of these cars. And then this time last year, you guys did this thing. Yeah. I was like, we, I just have to find a way. Have to find a way. So the idea is that this eventually is going to be the key that starts our very own Gunther Turbo. Anyone who's been watching the channel for a while, we introduced this a few months ago. Uh, yeah. We didn't really say why, but I think based on the comment section yeah. and your inbox, <laughs> yeah. I, think, I think people probably twigged as to why we bought a 993. I think the comment section gave it away, didn't it? Really? It did a bit, yeah. yeah. You, you know, so we'd have liked to have been here sooner, but because of the specific date of the update that this car was ready, we thought let's time it for while we're here. Mm -hmm. We can get this car unveiled. We're 12 months to the date. And I just find that such a serendipitous story that we should be yeah. here 12 months after yeah. unveiling that. And this is our chassis for, and this might be car one. Possibly. I'm going to pull some strings to see if we can make it car one. But so from here on, how do, what is the process now? Like basically the car is stripped down to its bare chassis. Okay. Um, all the components are removed. The car goes for media blasting. If there's any damage or any rust or anything, it, it's um, 
all repaired. Mm -hmm. The car is then, the shell is then strengthened. We add some extra uh, strength to the sills and stuff just to give it extra rigidity. And then the whole build process begins. And as you know, every panel is replaced. Core chassis is there. Yes. It's a restoration at the end of the day. But none of every panel, with the exception of the doors, is all replaced with carbon fiber. And then obviously underneath, mechanically, it's mm. completely revamped until you get this thing. Can this you believe, thing? let's just stand back a second. I'm, we did something similar the last time we were here. We parked a donor car That's next right. to, and that yeah. time it was a coupe. Mm -hmm. This thing is so, this thing's up to 11 now. Yeah. I can't believe that that starts life as this. Yeah. It's berserk. Starts as one of these. <sighs> yeah. And we restore it and we up, update it and upgrade it and it ends up. So we're not going to give it all away just now. We have a aspirational target in mind mm -hmm. for next year for a significant date as to yeah. when we're hoping to achieve a finished version, right? Yeah, and you like throwing me under the bus. Though. Yeah, yeah, I like to, you know, there's nothing like a good deadline. <laughs> um, but if we can pull it off, it will be incredible. Like truly, truly special if we can pull it off in time. And that's the, the in time bit is the bit. <laughs> but if we can do that, but the idea is, this is probably gonna go on about a 12 month journey now. Yeah, And 12 month build we're gonna fly into here for every major milestone journey that this build process takes place. And we're gonna take you along for as much of an in-depth update as we can as these things unfold. So it's gonna be a hell of a journey, buddy. Thank, thank you so much. Well, congratulations, Really appreciate mate. it. No, no, thank you. And honestly, congratulations to Peter, yourself, the whole team, um, what you guys have achieved. I just think it's blow away, so. Thank you. Well it means done. a lot when, you know, especially coming from people, the feedback we get from Enthusiasts and fans. Brilliant. Is, is, is quite mind blowing. It's going to be a journey, man. Yeah, it's going to be brilliant. Great.